Is there a right or wrong way to jump on a box? Absolutely not. But when we're talking about jumping, landing, you know, there are some things that we should take into consideration, especially with individuals with low experience in jumping and landing. For example, a group fitness class, we're dealing with individuals, you know, 25 to 60, 70, 80 years old that maybe haven't formally engaged in activities that are requiring, you know, stretch shortening cycles, you know, from their tendons, um, where their tissues are unprepared for a certain amount of stress that they're going to see in rebounding box jumps, double unders, jump rope, uh, ladder drills even. But when we start talking about box jumps, you know, one of the things that I used in, in my experience as a CrossFit coach in group fitness was, you know, teaching a jumping and landing progressions or progression using things like snap downs and teaching landing mechanics, you know, building the brakes uh, from eccentric focus uh, to have people understand, hey, how can we distribute load appropriately through the hips, you know, and knees um, to again, you know, limit any unwanted stress in specific parts of the body. So. One of the things I started using to just kind of identify maybe people who needed more specific instruction or help when it came to box jumps was using something called sound check, right? And sound check was a drill that I would use. Full class would, uh, would jump on a box. I would have my back turned and I would listen for the landing, right? If I heard them land, it let me know that maybe they're having a hard time absorbing or accepting force softly or gently or organizing their, their themselves where they can absorb that force in a wave-like manner which goes distal to proximal right in absorption and there are times when we're you know athletes uh, or we need to perform where we yeah we need to we need to land hard to then cut or move or make a dynamic uh, movement in our general population, I'm much more worried about them being able to slow themselves down, absorb appropriately, rather than making a super sharp, hard cut. So sound check, again, looks something a little bit like this, where, again, I'd have my back turned, you know, more, of, more as like a challenge, you know, and, and kind of a, 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 fun, a fun game for the class, would have them, you know, go ahead and jump on the box, right? And I'd like to hear them, again, jump as quiet, or land as quiet as possible, whereas other people would jump on the box, right, and make a very loud noise. And again, is that problematic? Does that tell me about, you know, injury risk? Not necessarily, but it is something as coaches that we can control, right? Teaching good jumping and landing mechanics, again, to, again, a human, you know, just as much time as we focus on snatch technique, we should also probably teach someone how to land uh, and jump, right? Especially if someone's, you know, for example, you know, hiking, you know, jumping off a log, being able to have a good jump, right? Um, walking, falling off a step, being ready to know how to absorb and, and, and take an impact. So again, box jumps, generally, I don't like them for conditioning. I think they're unnecessary. But if you are gonna be jumping, either for power production or conditioning, I think having a baseline level of knowledge on how to land, also how to absorb force, how to pull back on a landing can be really beneficial for your members. Sound check.